Welcome to another session of the prophetic training. Today we will be talking about fasting and the prophetic. Fasting and the prophetic. I would not like to name it prophetic fasting because we'll be discussing how fasting is related to the prophetic. And once again, my name is James Ajima, and I'll be taking you through this course. The focus is to be able to draw the line and to explain biblically the parameters of fasting and the discipline of fasting and also how to reap the best of benefits prophetically from a fast and, and to explain fasting in general and how it relates to the prophetic also to debunk any form of myths and ideas um, which may be circulating which are contrary to that which scripture has said or what actually it is in terms of the fast and how it is connected with the spirit or with the prophetic and so these will be the parameters within which we will be discussing let us begin with this particular scripture matthew chapter 6 verse 16. I'm reading from verse 16 now. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sound of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Verse 17. But thou, when thou fast, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Very powerful scripture now and we cannot discuss the subject of fasting without actually talking about this. You would agree, as we have read in this particular scripture, that what Jesus said was when you fast. Jesus did not say, and this is Jesus speaking now, he did not say, if you fast. He said, when you fast. The difference between these two, if is a conditional clause or a conditional term. And whenever if is brought, then it means that it is conditional. It may or may not be. If you fast, it means you may fast or you may choose not to fast. You may or may not do it. And that is if you fast. But Jesus said, when you fast, And when he states that it means based on the choice of words that is used, you are definitely going to fast. You should fast. You will fast. You must fast. And because you are already going to fast, it is not going to be a debate whether or not you fast. 
I am only going to speak concerning when you are fasting. Because you are going to fast. So, indirectly telling the apostles that the journey that they are going to be walking, they are, the, part of it is, is fasting. Fasting was going to be part of their life. And so, it, there was no question whether or not the believer should fast. Jesus said, when you fast, and so as a prophetic individual, as a prophetic student, the question is not whether you should fast. If you can fast, if you will fast, the issue is this, you will fast, you must fast, you can fast, you should fast. The, whatever we are going to talk about now is only going to be about when you fast. So about the fasting itself. The scripture is very clear that you will fast. So fasting is part of, of your Christian life. It is part of your Christian life. Now what we seek to do now is not to to juggle that because it has already been entrenched in scripture and Jesus' own words. That is, if all that is written in the Old Testament and the prophets does not count. Jesus emphatically said, when you fast. So we are going to discuss that which concerns when you are actually doing that which you are expected already to do. Because God already expects you to fast. But when you do it, how should you do it? How can you do it? How would you do it to be able to bring the best results as a prophetic individual? What is the mindset you should have? And in this particular scripture, Jesus was correcting a certain mindset. What is the mindset that you should have as an individual, a prophetic person in a fast? That is the focus. And so, if it was not clear enough, I would like to state it again. As a believer, as a prophetic person, a prophetic student, you are mandated you are mandated and it is expected of you from the heavens all the way to the earth that you fast fasting is a must not only because you are prophetic but because you are a believer and so fasting is a must and fasting is key now why is fasting key for that i would like us i'd like us to read the book of matthew chapter 9 verse 14 and 15. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast oft? But thy disciples fast not. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn? As long as the bridegroom is with them, can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. Hallelujah. This, this is as loaded as it is. So the disciples of John the Baptist the section of the Pharisees now come to Jesus and then says, we fast a lot. But your people don't fast. Why is it that you don't tell your people to fast? 
because even if they don't believe anything it's a jewish practice to fast the pharisees fast anybody who took god any seriously fasted and they had their own reasons for fasting but they do fast and their fasting technically from the context was to mourn sending their sins and their states they were they mourn and they fasted even for wrongdoing and so on and so forth and jesus answered and said when the bridegroom is with his friends or with his people and the bridegroom referring to he himself the people in the bride chamber they don't mourn they don't engage in mourning and they do not fast so long as the bridegroom is with them they do not mourn all they do is they jubilate why the bridegroom has brought the possibilities of joy right with them and jesus is talking about the marriage we will not want to go into it too much but then it signifies the betrothal at the time of betrothal before the bridegroom is taken away so he can return finally to take his bride what happens is that particular ceremony or that particular time the bride does not mourn because the groom is around the betrothal is going on and so jesus is technically saying that so long as i am here and then the betrothal is going on the betrothal between me and then my people me and the church is going on the people who are the within that bright chamber the children cannot be mourning but another thing also is that he as the bridegroom because he is physically present with them as god the possibilities of his power and his grace are with them in literal form they can view they can see him literally and they can hear him literally as a man and so they don't need any further push to be able to tangibly access the visible god but when he is taken away from them now he is in another realm and by his spirit he is living in them which is in us which is the church and so he is only in them by spirit and he is in another realm so they would have to move out and put themselves in a certain position such that the realm in which the bridegroom is or the possibilities of the bridegroom are still tangible enough unto them for them to be able to advance and for them to be able to perfect the work and so because the bridegroom was going to be taken away from them that is the reason why they needed to fast so that the possibilities of the bridegroom which in this case is god which is christ jesus the possibilities of of christ that will be taken from them because he is no longer literally there with them in the physical there is a need for them to have a means so as to still be able to switch and to continuously be able to advance themselves and to connect themselves continually and grow in the tangibility of those possibilities even though it is coming from another realm which is the spirit realm the holy spirit the god they are going to have is not no longer going to be walking in front of them and then they'll be eating bread with him he is going to be living in them 
which is the believer. The believer will have the Holy Spirit in him. And so what is going to happen is that he will no longer be able to relate with the God that he is working with from the outside. You are going to have to work with the God from within. And so there will be a need to mourn, to switch from the physical and dig deep on the inside into introspection and to be able to commune with that God. And it is only then that there is a necessity for the man or the woman, the believer, the prophetic individual to fast. So this is the purpose then of fasting. The purpose of fasting is to bring the man, the one who is fasting, into a certain disposition such that the possibilities of his God or the spirit of God, whether his voice, whether his hand, whether his move, or whatever it is, his whatever it is that exists within the parameter of Christ in the realm of the spirit, whatever it is that is existent within the parameter of Christ in the spirit realm by the Holy Ghost is made accessible and much more tangible to that particular believer. So that is the purpose, the first thing that we see about fasting, the first thing that we see about fasting. Why do we fast? So that the possibilities, okay, because the bridegroom has been taken away and we can only relate to him in the spirit which is abstract. So fasting is the one of the means by which that we come into a certain place of tangibility. We bring ourselves, we bring the members of our body, our soul into a certain point of humility and we tame the body so that the soul and the spirit can be able to access tangibility of God's voice, God's will, God's provision, God's power, God's hand, Christ Jesus, angelic, the supernatural realm, and so on and so forth. Because that is where he is operating with us from now. And so that is what Jesus is saying over here, that it is the necessity. It is at this time when the bridegroom is now away, because he's in another realm. And they will still need to be making contact with him it is then that they would have to mourn it is then that they would have to continually seek to shut the flesh down but when he was with them in the physical the possibilities of god were already there right in front of them if they needed bread jesus could multiply bread he is there literally now he himself was fasting but the word was the disciples were not fasting and he was explaining why they were not fasting because their time was was coming another thing which is also clear over that jesus was in his operation of ministry and so there was a necessity to fast which means there is a certain aspect of of divine purpose or assignment which is accessed through the means of of beating the flesh down and so and so those things are accessed or touched when there is so much focus towards the spirit so the realm from which those things are communicated there must be a detachment from this realm such that the focus is upon that realm that's another thing that we see concerning why we fast. The final thing that I will talk about is this. In the book of Exodus 20, 21, and so on, we see God giving commandments unto his people. The first part of the commandment, what we know as the law or the Ten Commandments. The first part of the Ten Commandments was concerning they not having any other God. 
they not worshiping any other god they not putting anything before him you shall not put anything before god you would only worship god you will revere his name you will neither make a graven image whether of anything on this earth or anything in the heavens or anything anywhere else you will only worship god the first part of the commandment is to make the people understand that nothing must come before me nothing that i have created should be in charge of your life or should be the the thing that you call to or that you go to you should not come to a point where you are controlled manipulated directed by creation you will have to take your order and your nourishment and your directives from me so the focus of that first part is engagement with god and and making sure that the people do not put anything so in other words anything even if it is god himself who created it angels power spirits anything anything which comes before god which takes priority which becomes a controlling force over a man's body becomes an idol before god and so for that reason god intends that nothing that he has created even the good should be or should become an idol in the life of his children and so nothing that he has created should control you including your appetite including meat including food including anything including sex including any article money riches whatsoever the intent is not for these things to become the focus of your worship if yourself you yourself and your beauty how handsome you are how beautiful you are the intent is not for it to become the focus but rather god should remain the focus now in the quest to bring and to always maintain god and his word and his power and his glory and his will in the prime focus of the soul that is what necessitates a fast so in a fast something specific is shunned is denied you deny yourself of something specific either by divine ordinance imposition or a personal conviction or decision to embark on that journey so anything that takes prime in your life can be fasted so the first thing is food any appetite there's everybody has an appetite for food so you deny yourself of either food or any form of satisfaction any other form of satisfaction so if we are supposed to put the definition or explanation of fasting in a nutshell it is the self denial of food or any other form of satisfaction together or in isolation so as to focus on god his word his communication and prayer so when the focus is taken away from satisfying yourself in anything what happens then is that the attention has to be diverted to god 
So a fast is not complete until the focus is diverted to God. So when you are in a fast, you are denying yourself of something specific so that you can use that ample time and that energy and that level of focus and determination to be able to seek God, to look be upon him to worship him to just love him to read his word or to just meditate upon him and this is what we mean by fasting mind you it is not only food but the most prevalent kind of fast is that which concerns food the reason is because the belly or the appetite for food is one of the strongest appetites and one of the most indispensable appetites that the human body or the human soul always seeks to address or seeks to satisfy. And sometimes the blessings of God like food, like provision, like technology. Anything can become an impediment between you and the relationship with God. It becomes your focus. It becomes your, your pride. It becomes the thing that you think about. And God seeks to not have anything in your life that is before him. So it could be appetite for food, it could be appetite for certain pleasure, it could be it could be desire to engage with other men, it is it could be a sexual appetite, it could be appetite for anything. You know, appetite for fun and certain kinds of fun movies. So when it enter into fasting, we are talking about this, all these can be denied for the sole purpose of entering into communion with God, meditating upon God, or waiting upon the Lord and seeking His face. Now, all this that has been stated goes into one thing. We can then see that when we fast, it is not to move God. Our fasting does not change God. Our fasting changes us. Our fasting does not move God closer. Our fasting moves us closer in the spirit. Our fasting does not make God's hand move. And I want to be stating it very clearly. But when we fast, we move such that God's hand and his might and his power is more tangible and accessed within our human parameter. So it is not that when you fast, God answers you quickly. No. It is that when you fast, you are more likely to receive the faith that is able to release that result within the quickest or the shortest possible time so god will still have moved god will still have answered but the tangibility of it is heightened because of a fast god will still have spoken to you but you, you hearing it or you receiving the communication in a much more tangible, a much more audible form, it may not have been there, but because of the fasting, when you have put yourself into displeasure, not satisfying the flesh, your spirit man is heightened. In expression and so that which is tangible to you is that which is from the Lord that which is tangible to you is from the Lord and that is very very key because many people think that when we fast 
we move the hand of God. I am going to take a 21 day fast to move the hand of the Lord. I came to tell you as a prophet, that is not so. It is a heretic statement in all of its forms. No matter how we put it, it is a very, very strange statement even to make if you know God. Because when he says, draw nigh unto me and I draw nigh unto you, the thing is for the man to move. When the man moves, he then realizes that God has been close by all along. So when you put measures in place to be able to draw closer to him, then you realize how close he is. And so God is, if God is moved to speak to you because of your fast, then it means that when you do not fast, God does not speak. But God is not held bound by what you do or what you did not do. So God will speak in a way. And yet, it is you being able to capture it. So when we are in a fast, we, we have put ourselves into a place where we can actually, you know, bear the reception. The reception of that which God is bringing unto us the will that he is communicating unto us, that which is me, because we are talking about the prophetic, I would like to zone in on this one. What he is saying, what he is showing, your, your, your senses are heightened and activated. Heightened to a certain degree that maybe if you were not in a fast, it may not be so. And doesn't mean that maybe every time somebody is in a fast, that is another level and then we'll talk about it in the advanced session. But then what we are talking about is that within the period of a fast, there is something that happens. There is, it's, a fasting then can, can either be the heightener or it can become also the constant checks for your soul to reset itself, not to always be pursuing satisfaction from the flesh, but to be seeking the Lord, my soul, bless the Lord. So when we fast, we are telling our soul, this is the direction I want you to, I want your focus, I want you to be focused upon God and to be able to capture that which he wants you to do. I want you to focus on God and be moved by that which he has intended to move for you. I say once again that even without the fast, it is not in the fast that God speaks. It is just because you are his servant, you are his son, and as you call, he will respond. Now, this is the issue. Now, Daniel, in the book of Daniel chapter 9, began to pray a certain prayer concerning the freedom of Israel. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, when he began to pray, he said that he prayed and he mourned and he fasted 21 days. 21 days he mourned and he fasted. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When he was in the fast, 21 days, Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is what happened. After the 21 days, there was an appearance. He began to have a vision. And this is Daniel chapter 9, verse 21. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. 
So, this is what transpired. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee. I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved, therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Hallelujah. So, Daniel began to pray. And in his prayer, there was a response. And the angel was sent to him. But in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel was in a fast. In chapter 9, he's in praying and he's making supplications. Chapter 10, though there was a response, but in chapter 10, he's adding a fast. And there was three weeks of fasting. Automatically, Gabriel came to him again. And then this is what the man said. Verse 12, Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself, which is the fasting, before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. So the thing that Daniel said from the first day, God heard it. The Lord heard it. And then there was a response from the heaven that same day. So it was not the 21 days fast that gave the response. It was just a prayer. But here comes the issue. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand. What shall befall thy people in the latter days? For yet the vision is for many days. Hallelujah. This is what we are talking about. And so, and so, though Daniel was fasting, the fasting was not for God to move. God answered the prayer. But the fasting was to keep him in a certain light such that when the response has come, he will be able to see it. He will be able to receive it. He will be able to understand it and to key deeper into it. And so, whilst he was in that wait, he was not waiting for God. He was waiting on God. So, it's a different thing. Waiting for God in the fast means that God will need the fast to be able to move. No, there was no need for the fast for God to move or for God to speak. God is speaking. But the fast was needed so that Daniel will be in a certain disposition. That when the angel appeared, Daniel is able to see. Daniel is able to perceive that this is an angel that has been sent to me. And the tangibility of that. The Bible said that the people who were even around... Daniel was in so much of a position that though the people could not see the angel, they were they could experience the tangibility of that supernatural encounter Daniel was having. The trees were quaking. There, there was a lot of quaking upon them and then they fled. So, so what supernaturally was happening upon Daniel came into a certain space where it was more tangible to him because of the fast. So, this is very key when we see this in scripture. Your fasting is to move you closer to God. Your fasting is to help you even to be able to access the possibilities of the supernatural and the possibilities of his voice even much more audibly and much more clearer. Your fasting does not move God. Your fasting moves you and changes you so that you will be able to to be in the disposition and a better disposition so that your soul will respond unto the Lord. Fasting heightens you to be able to reach that which God has intended. Fasting does not change God. Fasting helps in your faith. Fasting does not change the will of God. So when God has spoken, Fasting does not change his will. Fasting heightens you in faith 
and it helps you in faith because your focus is only upon the Lord so that you will be able to adequately enforce that which is his will. And I state it very clearly. But there are many, many things, many types of fasts that are registered within scripture. And I would like to go through them quickly. The first is the dry fast, where the, the individual is neither satisfying the appetite of hunger or thirst, and neither eating food nor drinking water, taking anything at all, and also denying themselves of sexual pleasure, and so on and so forth. That is the dry fast. And it is in the scripture. The next kind of, of fast is when we talk about fasting delicacies. Fasting delicacies. So that kind of fast is that something specific is fasted. Something specific is fasted. For example, Daniel will say, I will not eat the meat that was being prepared so it was fasting off of meat of or any of the products of the animals that they sacrifice unto their gods unto their idols and so on and so forth so that is fasting delicacies so he only lived on leaves so that is one kind of fast there is also a kind of fast where food is not being touched but liquid there is there is there is hydration or liquid is being is being so Test and so on and so forth is being satisfied but hunger is not and so the individual may be taking water or the individual may be taking um, any any simple um, liquid to to keep the body hydrated for the period of the fast and so that is a wet fast and so on and so forth so there is dry there is wet there is fasting delicacy so certain specific things somebody could so the food could be there but then something specific with there and then the holy spirit can even lay embargo on you concerning certain matters certain things and so certain delicacies which have become idolators in the individual's life can be can be embargoed for a period of time and so if if it has to do with meat if it has to do so that your attention is never on god because of these things it can be taken out it can be fasted so that your focus and sometimes that that is even what is what is required in a, in a lot of ways um and so it's it's not about the diet but so that your focus can be upon the lord your focus can be upon the lord and that is fasting delicacy so something specific is fasted Maybe you used to like you used to like um, turkey a lot, and uh, when 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 you are fasting delicacies, you are staying away from this thing that you like. You are so much into turkey. You are so much into chicken. So much into beef. Without it, you cannot you cannot live. And if if that is the case, you can even fast off of this particular thing. And so long as you are denying yourself of it there is a certain inclination that happens within your soul to to realign itself because the soul will no longer be seeking the satisfaction from the outside from the flesh or whatever you are putting on the inside but it will begin to be directed to where your mind or your meditations are which is the spirit and so you will not be living by the bread but you'll be living by the word that is proceeding from his mouth. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So you will be feasting upon his word and be feeding your spirit and be feeding your inner man. That is fasting delicacies. Now, fasting delicacies also can cover any kind of technology or pleasure or fun so that is pleasure fast and pleasure fast we are talking about fasting staying away from sex if you are a married individual staying away from sex if you are not married or automatically you are fasting 
that that particular appetite you are you are staying off of it and so for the married people there is a fast that is also staying away and if you are married the scripture is very clear that you seek content or, or uh, you, you must seek um the acceptance or the agreement of your spouse before you engage in that kind of fast and the scripture is very clear about it because your body is not yours neither is your spouse's body theirs and so because of the covenant of marriage there ought to be a seeking of clarity and you have to be giving consent from the partner so that you embark on that particular fast and the bible is very clear that when you go on this particular kind of fast which is a fast which involves a denial of sexual pleasure in a marriage immediately after the fast there must be a union and there must be a conjoining there must be a quick return onto the marital or the matrimonial bed and the reason is so that the devil does not find space amongst you or within that particular marriage a foothold to be able to exploit any body or your spouse or your partner so it is very clear it has to be by consent there is also technological fast and sometimes the holy spirit would instruct or inform or embargo something specific it could be tv that has become an idol upon your life it could be it could be even your social media handles and you are so bent on it you cannot live without them any longer and even they become a distraction when the holy spirit is speaking to you when you are in the presence of god you would still be checking your phones and be checking your facebook and everything the time that you are supposed to be studying the word and so sometimes the holy spirit will just lay an embargo on you sometimes you yourself would have to prompt yourself that you you need to take a fast out of these and so it can either be an ordered a fast that is ordered by the holy spirit or it's a fast that is what by reason of your own conviction and decision based on your pursuits what you are desiring you know to to do or to achieve in the realm of the spirit so you are taking that particular decision and by conviction you are going into the fast or the holy spirit or the lord himself will order a fast upon you and it's very specific and when those times come it is means that something specific either is supposed to be communicated to you is supposed to be released to you and he wants you in a particular position where you will have the the capacity to to experience the tangibility of it or to be able to hear or receive that particular insight clearly enough and that is why he ordered the fast or something which is a part of creation within the world is getting your attention and is taking your attention away from the lord and away from from destiny away from his will and so he he orders the fast so that he protects you he gets you out of that particular bondage and addiction whether to the movies whether to whatever it is and so you you could be even instructed you could be told to stay off to stay off your television set to to stay away from it for a particular period of time whilst you are within that fast whilst you are within that engagement you could be ordered to even you know stay off of all this you know social media and so on and so forth and and there could be something specific there are even some retreats that the lord will order you and no gadgets nothing you 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 are going to be offline and off from voice calls any form of distraction whatsoever now not all fasts are in that way where you are cut off from the whole world and so on and so forth there are specific times when we are talking about retreats and and waiting periods and so on and so forth like that but generally these are different areas where so something that you like maybe you like playing tennis a lot and you can't live without it maybe you like playing some you know video games or something and automatically it's it's cut off it's because of the attention 
that it is giving anything that becomes an idol in your life the spirit is sure to protect you from and to help you in that particular infirmity and so the fast is number one to help you to be able to regain your engagement with the lord and and detach from any form of hold anything that is holding the center stage of your soul and and these these are fast there are some fasts which are ordered and so um uh, they are activated with a supernatural help and and for example when you see moses went up onto the mountain 40 days and 40 nights and it is not something that he just did it is supernaturally enhanced so because of the kind of encounter he was in in that fast hunger and his physical body would not react to the 40 days but if you are taking a conviction fast or a decisive fast it is not advisable for you to go beyond a particular day whilst not touching food and water. And this I will say very clearly. There are fast things that we read about in the scripture that were ordered by the spirit and they were engaged at a certain height of supernatural encounters. What it means is that the people who engage in those fasts were caught up into another realm. They were in existing and, and being nourished by a supernatural means. And so whilst there was famine in the entirety of Israel, Elijah the prophet was being fed through a supernatural means. And so if it is ordered by the spirit, then there is going to be grace to be able to follow suit because one of the things out of hunger and out of desire many enter into fast you know to prove and and a lot of times this is where problems and misconceptions are born about fasting know that fasting is to move you to god and when he orders it he gives grace and his, that grace swallows up the appetite and that grace nourishes you for the time. But if you are taking a decisive fast, there is a period beyond which you are not supposed to go dry. If your health, whatever it is you are seeking and you are praying about, you would have to live as a vessel on the earth to be able to access it. If this prophetic height you are seeking, you would have to be alive. And so the wisdom of the ancients is that if it is not an ordered, supernaturally engaging fast that the Lord has ordered for you, there is a time period that you ought not to go dry. No, what I mean dry, I mean no food, no water, nothing. And that period... I believe is between three to seven days. If it is not an ordered fast and a supernaturally engaging fast, when you go three days, three nights, no food, no water, between three days to seven days maximum, that should be the extent for the sake of your mortal body. That should be the extent of your dry. But if the Spirit of God imposes upon you and captures you into a fast and you are in a supernatural dimension, a supernatural engagement, oh, you could go for 40 days. Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. The Bible said that after that, he was hungered. He was hungered. After that, he was hungered. Now, we could look at that and then we see something. He was hungry, but he was not tasty. Does that mean that for the 40 days, he drank, but then he did not eat food. He did not taste food. Or he did not taste food and water. And if he did not taste food and water, it means that there was, it was a supernatural, you know, encounter. Or it was an encounter kind of fast where there was help that was given to him by the spirit 
said that his mortal body was not collapsing under him. We have heard stories of many people saying they are pursuing something spiritual and they go into the mountain, they say they are fasting, no food, no water, nothing for 40 days and, and it has been cataclysmic and very, very catastrophic onto their mortal bodies. And, and as a prophetic individual, you must know that the vessel, the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It means that the spirit will ride upon this body to be able to move. And so even in our spiritual engagements, we come to a place where we are able to understand there is grace available to do these things. But if you are going mechanically, then you would have to do it with the wisdom that has been tested by scripture and so on and so forth. Daniel fasted 21 days, but he took something. He just lived on, on basic stuff, nothing nothing that was delicacy nothing that was strong no wine nothing he just lived on basic leaves in their time of training they just lived on leaves and he was okay and he was still able to see mighty angels and so on and so forth so my brother my sister i want to encourage you there is that which we call the encounter kind of us moses and co engaged in those and it was supernatural Elijah would be told, take and eat. Your journey is long. And after eating that food, that supernatural food that was brought by the angel, the man will walk for 40 days and 40 nights onto a mountain, climb the mount, go through valleys and enter a mountain for 40 days without food and without water. And that there is a nourishment in his spirit that kind of a fast that kind of a journey needs supernatural help and as you pray and you believe god to usher you into that kind of supernatural help to be able to go many days just feasting upon his word you would have to grow in your fasting and that is where we come to growth you don't take off as a tornado you don't leap off like a cheetah into into certain aspects of fasting you would have to develop your 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 capacity in your fast and grow in it the desire is to grow and to be consistent the desire is to grow and to be consistent consistent with the lord consistent with that which you do and so if you have never fasted your breakfast and your lunch which means you are able to take your supper you have never fasted breakfast and your lunch it is advisable you don't launch yourself into a day and night fast so you allow the body to adjust and so you as you begin to build yourself as you are listening to this message you are inspired to fast you are inspired to enter into a fast you are inspired to enter deeper into a fast begin from a point where you can gradually adjust and allow the holy spirit to help you and then grow to a point where you can be a master of the art of fasting Hallelujah. You can be a master of it. Now, some people ask, if I fast one meal in a day, is it a fast? I'll tell you as a prophet, it is a fast. If I fast two meals, is it a fast? It is a fast. Can I fast and be at work? Yes, you can. The focus is your mind should be upon the your meditations. That is why we talked about meditations in the practical sessions. Your the meditations of your heart, your focus should be on the Lord. Your ears are for the Lord. Every least opportunity that you get, your mind tells to the Lord, and you spend time, even within 
the short breaks anything that you anytime you can you can afford your mind is upon the lord you can fast even whilst at work you can fast whilst on a journey you can fast everywhere you don't need to be hidden on a certain mountain in a certain bush to fast you can fast on the field you can fast anywhere somebody will ask if whilst i am fasting can i cook food you can fast and still prepare food because not all fasting involve, involves denying yourself of even smelling the aroma of of foodstuff substances no you can fast and maybe you are a wife and you still have to prepare food for there are many ministers of god who who may even be within fast but they would have to fulfill their wifely duties and so they would have to prepare food for their spouses and yet they are in a fast they may have to attend to their strangers they may have to attend to to people they are hosting and so on and so forth and so please do not allow these myths to limit you in terms of your fast you can fast a meal and the lord and your soul your body responds and reacts to it but fast according to your level and allow yourself to grow so if you fast a meal for a time you have to grow in your capacity of a fast god can only use you per the level of your capacity and so Prepare yourself for that which God wants to do with your life. And you get to a point where you are fasting two meals, when you are fasting the whole day, when you are fasting 24 hours, when you are fasting day and night, and so on and so forth. And, and you are fasting long. Maybe the farthest you can go was fasting, you know, the whole day which is the whole day not including the night which, which means you are breaking your fast in the evening the longest you could go is two days is three days you grow yourself even in those and so at a point you, sh you are able to go 21 days you are able to go 40 days but allow yourself to grow don't leap into it thereby destroying the mortal body upon all upon which the holy spirit would want to instill the anointing you are seeking to be able to move his church forward hallelujah now jesus was speaking about fasting now as we read and then he spoke about something very peculiar the religiosity of fast that is the last kind of fast the religious fast it is the kind of fast that is done only to please others the kind of fast that is done to fulfill all righteousness it was not relationship based it was to fulfill or i just need to do it to show others that i am i am fasting i am doing something and jesus said don't engage in that kind of fast so so the religious fast is the fast that is not in connection to jesus at all the person in focus is not god but it is just your image so that people will also know that you fast. You get nothing for it. The Bible said that you have received your reward here on earth. But it must be an engagement between you and your God, which means it's a private matter. Fasting is a private matter. It does not mean that when somebody hears you are fasting, it automatically means you have destroyed the fast. No, it is a state of heart. When your heart is seeking the attention of men towards your fast, you are destroying the purpose of the fast, which means the results you are supposed to rake in by that fast, you do not get it. So you want you want to be to be seen as very pious and sanctimonious and so more so on and so forth. No, that is not the way to go. You may exclude yourself. You may excuse yourself. Go into a chapel. Go into a place of isolation and fast and so on and so forth. That is acceptable. That is okay. But if you are fasting amongst people, do not allow your 
personal decision of a relationship with God to interrupt with the normal flow of work at the office or the flow of joy within the house or anything like that. If not, then you have to exclude, exclude yourself or excuse yourself because if you are fasting, the Lord is saying, anoint yourself. Don't seek the appreciation or the approval of other people for your fast. Let God be the judge of that which you are doing and let God be your rewarder. Don't, do, don't be religious in your fasting, but rather be relational. Let your relationship with God speak. In the book of Isaiah, it speaks of a particular kind of fast. That was they were fasting, they were wearing sackcloth and smearing and putting on ashes and so on and so forth. But the scriptures was very clear. This is not the kind of fast that I desire. Rather, give to the poor. You know, be, be benevolent, be good. Do not be within the fast and then you are satisfying your own pleasure the fast is supposed to get you closer to god and so your focus is with god and so sometimes you can put on a very a very very pious face in the name of fasting and yet your mind is not upon the lord at all your mind is not upon him what he's saying or anything like that you are not staying or being attentive to listen to what he has to say or to see what he has to show you you are just fulfilling the righteousness. You are not meditating upon the scripture. You are neither studying the scripture or anything like that. Now, that is just taking a diet. That is just taking a diet. But if the fast is clean and it is, listen to me, you can be in this fast. You can be fasting and still go about your normal activities your mind being rested upon him and you take time to pray you take time to engage the spirit of god you take time to engage the holy spirit and engage the father to seek him and to pursue him hallelujah hallelujah and so these are myths which surround fasting which as a prophetic individual in the New Testament, you have to stay far away from and allow yourself to grow also in this practice and also in the art of fasting. Because it is not if you fast, it is when you fast. Fasting gets you into a certain height of possi prophetic possibility that ordinarily you may not chance upon. Fasting gives you clearance in the spirit to even pray and to be able to deal with certain things and to carry certain burdens in the spirit wherein if you were going about everything normally, it may not have been so clear or it may not have been so tangible. Fasting gets you into that space. Fasting, you know, activates a certain level of faith for you to operate even in the dimension of God, whether prophetically or in the area of miracles or whatever it is, or for you even to believe, to have the faith to manifest and to walk into that which the Lord has promised. Fasting heightens the possibility of faith. Because it keeps your mind upon one thing and that is the Lord. Looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith. And I want to also remind you, there is the fast that is taken by decision and by your own conviction or pursuit. Based on your desire, you enter into a fast. And then there is the fast which is ordered by the Lord. And so fasting and the prophetic go hand in hand because the prophetic can impose a fast. And so some you could hear sometimes in the prophetic where somebody is told, the Lord said you should take this fast. It is not out of place. The Holy Spirit can order you into a fast, can lead you into a fast, and you also can take a fast. Both are as powerful as anything because the effect is the same 
And so you can look at the pointers that I gave and then it will usher you into the fast. Fasting is not about anybody. It is about your own self. It is about that gift. It is about that talent. It is about those things that the Lord wants to stay in you. And whilst you are in a fasting, you are able to enter into it. The last type of fast which we will talk about even in the advanced level is what we call the fasted life. That is the consecration fast. This kind of fast is fast that is ordered upon your life based on your assignment and it is part of your consecration package. But we will discuss that in um, subsequent lessons and we'll go into it further. But go ahead and, and enjoy the presence of God even with the fast. Go ahead and, and sharpen yourself in the art of fasting and see how marvelous and how tangible, how very accessible the voice of the Lord will be even upon your life. After many years of fasting and prayers, after many years of waitings, of of taking on retreats, personal retreats, and, and after many years of waiting upon the Lord, you, you realize that your life cannot be the same. Your faith level cannot be the same. The way you even express and the tangibility, how crisp the voice of God is upon you cannot be the same. When you are in a fast, it sounds as if God's voice is much more crisper, it's much more concise, it hits you much more louder, and it feels as though you are within a certain space and maybe you are within a time where you have deflected a little bit and and certain things have been capturing your mind and have have captivated have taken over your mind the cares of this life has become the idol you know a lot of struggle a lot of issues are going on in your life or the issues about your ministry are before you and then you can't seem to have this focus upon the lord to be able to progress and to advance prophetically listen to me let us move into a fast enter into a fast enter into it and you would see how you the lord will help you and reset and reprogram and bring your mind and your soul back onto the focus of him and he will give you peace for the season god richly bless you and i hope that this was helpful and i hope that you will receive grace as you listen to this teaching to be able to fast whatever health or physical problem whatever limitations that is set upon your life that will limit you from this particular possibility we decree and we declare let it be taken down whether it is sicknesses it is diseases whatever it is that is a limitation we declare let it be taken down and may your body receive strength may your body be nourished by the spirit of god even as you undergo the fastings even before the lord may you be heightened may you be sharpened in jesus name bye bye Thank you.